Good morning, church family and friends. It's so good to hear a response coming back from those who are gathered here. We thank you for blessing us with your presence. And for those of you who are joining us online or who are listening to us through Zoom, we thank you for blessing us with your presence as well. For all of our guests who are joining us, we thank you and ask that you take an opportunity that in the comment section you will find our connection card pinned there. If you'll take the moment to complete that connection card and then submit that so that we might have an opportunity to connect with you a little further. Prayer requests can be submitted uh, in the comments all the way up until the end of the sermons. Prayer requests can be submitted in the comments all the way up until the end of the sermon. Uh, For you who are here in the sanctuary, you can submit those prayer requests uh, by dialing the number that should be on the screen. There we go. One more. Bah, there you go. <laughs> so you can dial that number and submit your prayer request all the way up through the... Thank you. <laughs> Always appropriate timing for comic relief. Uh, so you can submit your prayer request by dialing that number on the screen. Again, for those of you who are joining us online, submit those in the comment section all the way up to the end of the sermon. A weekly time of devotion is available each Thursday at noon on Facebook. Each Thursday at noon, we have a weekly time of devotion. Certainly invite you to have a chance to join us for that time of reflection and inspiration. Weekly news and notes may be submitted to our uh, website. You can submit those on Tuesday of each week, Tuesday by 12 of each week. You can subscribe to the weekly news and notes through the church website, and that's www.farmingtonfumc.com. Org. Just an updated announcement, uh, Michelle King's commissioning service is taking place not on June 6th as I initially announced, but actually on June 13th. So we'll be able to view that with her and all of those who are going to be commissioned, who are going to be ordained on June 13th, Sunday, June 13th. Uh, you can go to michiganumc.org in order to view that. That's michiganumc.org in order to view that. In-person worship continues, friends, and uh, with the updated information that has come out from the CDC, we have also made an update to our uh, building opening plan. And so beginning next Sunday, next Sunday, next Sunday, you're still in practice, awesome. (laughs) Next Sunday, uh, face masks and face coverings will not be required for those who are fully vaccinated. However, if you feel more comfortable continuing to wear the mask, you can do so. For folks who are not uh, fully vaccinated, meaning both shots or one of the Johnson & Johnson, uh, we're going to strongly recommend that you continue to wear the mask for your health and safety and for the health and safety of others. Lastly, friends, we have various opportunities to be of service and a part of this community of faith. Uh, One is our finance team that continues to help us to be good stewardships, uh, stewards of the resources that you provide for us, and we've been able to do something that has been miraculous over the last 18 months, uh, as I've reported to you before. Our stewardship ministry helps us to creatively think of ways uh, to understand that our giving is a part of our worship and not an obligation, but actually an opportunity to be in worship with God. Outreach Committee takes us out into our community to be of service to those around us. Our trustees help us not only to maintain this physical structure, but to do all those things like beautifying the grounds that you see when you come to the sanctuary and to the building. And then our streaming team is looking for two or three more persons to be a part of our team that we might continue to offer this uh, video broadcast to those who are uh, comfortable being home or who are just a little bit more apprehensive. And then more importantly, for all of the people that we're reaching that will never come into the doors of this church, but because we're providing this avenue, they're able to be a part of this community of faith. So if any of those are interest to you, feel free to send me an email at pastoranthony at farmingtonfumc.org. That's pastoranthony at farmingtonfumc.org. With that, friends, we prepare ourselves to move forward into worship with that wonderful hymn of the church, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
morning, church. It's so nice to see you all and to be seen. Will you please join me in the opening prayer? God who knows all about our strengths and our weaknesses, we have assembled in this place to praise and worship your wonderful name. Free our hearts, our hands, and our mouths that we may offer you jubilant expressions of our joy. Dwell with us once more that we may feel your loving embrace and draw courage to face tomorrow. Equip us, O God, to share our faith with boldness and compassion. Hear our Lord, hear our prayer, Lord. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, than that perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of God for the people of God. And so, probably the most important reminder of our lesson from God this morning, God loves me all the time. God loves me all the time. As I prepared for this morning and read the scripture from Philippians, I struggled with how to talk about the last times, how to, to make that appropriate for children. I didn't come up with a good answer. So I wanted to share a philosophy that comes from Africa. Um, and is celebrated by the likes of Desmond Tutu and um, Nelson Mandela, as well as Dr. King. It's called Ubuntu. It is, in my mind, a way to make God present among us here and now. It comes with a story about a group of children who were gathered up and there was to be a race to get the goodies. They were gonna run a race and whoever got to the goodies first got the most goodies, treats, whatever they were, the rewards. And this group of children, instead of being on your market said, go, they all put their arms around each other and went together. Nobody had to win the race, they went together. The statement of philosophy from Ubuntu, as taught to us by these children, is I am because we are. And so as community, we do our best to understand the unknowable and to make God present because we are together. So whenever adults or children come together and put their arms around each other, and all go for the treat, for the rewards. We make the beloved community present and indeed make God present among us in this world. Amen.
Thank you, Harvey, as always, for offering us beautiful music, for setting the stage and the tone for our time of worship. Friends, for the next few moments, which are ours, allow me to focus our thoughts on the sermonic theme, struggle and reward. Struggle and reward. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask your blessing upon us as we've come into this, your holy space, that we've entered into this time of worship, whether we're here in the physical sanctuary or wherever we might find ourselves, indeed, this is now holy ground. We open ourselves to you fully, mind, heart, body, and soul, that you might impart to us, speak to us, implant within us, instruct and direct us in the path that we ought to go, that we might be the best beacons of hope and transformation that we can be, so that those who see us see your light shining in us and are drawn from out of darkness into relationship with you. Come Holy Spirit, I now decrease and ask that you would increase, that every word that is uttered, every revelation that is given will give glory to you. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, and all God's people together said, Amen. Amen. Indeed, friends, at times throughout our journey of life, we find ourselves in moments of intense personal, financial, or spiritual struggle. We struggle to change destructive habits and behaviors, negative self-talk, and pessimistic outlooks. We struggle to make our paychecks stretch in order to cover all the bills that we have each month. We struggle to find peace of mind and personal fulfillment amidst frustrating work environments and school environments. We struggle to hold on to hope when we are buffeted by despair and the sudden loss of those we've loved dearly. Indeed, hope is a vital nourishment for our minds, our bodies, and our souls, and it requires us, indeed, to find and hold on to it, especially in our moments of trial and hardship. As people of faith, we hold on to the hope in Christ, recognizing that in Christ we have and can overcome all our struggles. Now, let me say this parenthetically. That does not mean the process will be easy, and often it is not. Precisely because we're struggling for various reasons. One, we're struggling because we're trying to be faithful, and if you've ever tried to live faithfully in the midst of a world that's not trying to support that faithful living, you understand that from time to time there may be a coworker, there may be somebody that every time you see them, you have to say that little, Lord, help me not say anything today. Sometimes we struggle because we're trying to live faithfully. The other times, if we want to be honest with ourselves, we struggle because of some of our unwise choices. Yes, I can take my paycheck and go to the casino and blow the whole thing. That is completely my right and my decision, but eventually I do have to go home and my spouse and I are going to have to have a difficult conversation about why we can't get food and pay for the utilities. Sometimes we struggle because of our own bad choices. And, and here's the one that hurts the most. Sometimes we struggle simply because we have an adversary that likes to push our buttons. Did nothing wrong. Simply someone who wants to see how long it'll take for us to snap. Some of us call that person by name. Always pushing our buttons for no apparent reason outside of simply wanting to push our buttons. We struggle. But Christ offers us that reaffirmation, and our offer offers us that affirmation that indeed, although you might struggle for a little while, it is because you are developing something that's more precious than gold. Where our modern understanding is gold is not the most precious of metal now. I think it's tungsten. If you've ever seen tungsten, it doesn't look very impressive, but it is worth more than gold, silver, or bronze. But the analogy is this, that, that the most valuable thing that you can think of, your faith in Christ, your relationship with God is much more important than that. And if in the process of creating this very fine metal, it goes through this difficult journey called proofing, 
where it is, again, heated so that it moves out and removes impurities, and then it is refined and beat on, and then it's heated again and remove even more impurities. It says if the precious metal goes through that process, you too will have to go through that refining process in order to produce something that's much more valuable than precious metal. Now, friends, we don't like to hear that part because it means that I'm going to have to struggle at some point in life. And, and those of us who are maturing in faith have realized that, that my faith is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. My faith is not I will never have to endure a hardships card. My faith helps me look at hardships differently. That I'm no longer bound to see things through the lens of dark clouds and negative thought. I look at them as an opportunity to see how God's going to do it this time. I don't know how God's going to do it, but when I remember what God has done in the past, I can hold on to the hope that God can and will do it again. I just need to keep my eyes focused on what God is leading. The author of our text understands this as he's writing to encourage these first century Christians, these Christians in Asia Minor who are on the precipice of a great persecution simply because of their faith. The Christian communities in Asia Minor are going to be the subject and target of those who are wanting easy answers. I know you haven't met people who want easy answers to complex questions and problems. But, but in the first century church, there, there was the sense and the temptation that if anything went wrong, all we need to do is blame the Christians. Economic hardship, blame the Christians. Disease and plague, blame the Christians. An unpopular or unwise leader, blame the Christians. And so these Christians, these early Christians became some of the first martyrs because people wanted an easy answer. People wanted to gravitate towards someone to blame as opposed to dealing with the difficult questions and difficult answers to complex things. Just give me someone to blame, make it easy for me so I don't have to think about how do I really need to be of service to my neighbor? Thank you for that children's message this day, for, for it reminds us of the switching of the thought process from I'm going to race to be the first one there and get as much as I can, and whoever is second, you get whatever is left over, and thinking, well, wait a minute, if we all go together, we'll all get something. We might all not get all of it. Indeed, it's this early point of the life of the church, folks struggled with that it's me first versus it's you. And if you get, then that means I'm not going to get. But, but in faith, in our relationship with God, if God is blessing you, I can celebrate it. Because if God is blessing you, if I'm in the neighborhood, God's eventually got to get to my house. And I might not be the first on the blessing list, but as long as I'm on the list, I'm happy. Those of us who've signed up and have received our COVID vaccinations, you might not have been on the first part of the list like I was. When they said 65 and over, I said, all right, I got some time to wait. But once they dropped the age, all right, I'm on the list now. And, and when they gave me the call, I was there. And even though I had to wait in line, I was still on the list. I knew I was going to get my vaccine. So it didn't matter if I had to wait 15 minutes or an hour. I was going to get what I was on the list to get. That's what our author is helping us understand, that you have a reward that no matter when it comes around, celebrate it. You have something that is far more precious than the most precious of metals. Don't leave it. Don't trade it in. Don't go to the pawn shop and exchange it for something right now in order to satisfy a temporary thing. Yes, life is complex. Yes, there are struggles that we'll have to endure and deal with. Yes, there are things that hurt, but our faith helps us through them all. Our author helps to encourage this Christian community that although they're going through struggle, even though they're having to deal with some hardship for a little while, it's going to produce something in them more precious than the finest of precious metals that they should resist the quick fix, simple solution in order to hold on to their faith amidst the struggles and persecutions that they will face. The author reminds them of the goal 
Paul talks about it in a different way. Though I have not yet attained it, I still stretch for it. I pursue it each and every day. Not that I'm going to ever be perfected on this side of the world, to use some Wesleyan language, but, but I'm going to strive to be better than I was the day before. And if I fail today, that's just an opportunity for God to be gracious and to me tomorrow so that we can get better and continue to move forward. He pushes them, urges them, encourages them, hold on to the goal. Keep that in sight. There's much talk about the Olympics either being canceled or not canceled. And there are athletes who have trained for more than their whole life for just this one opportunity. And many of us focus on the first, the second, and the third place winners. The gold medal is the standard. None of us really remember who won the silver unless you're Nancy Kerrigan and we only remember Nancy for, well, there's other reasons. We can go into that later. No one remembers who won the bronze medal, but think of this, friends. Of all the people who contended for those medals, every one of them had to be better than at least a hundred other people. Yes, the competition is to see who's going to get the first place medal, but, but what I love is hearing the stories of persons who did their personal best even though they did not win. Because the goal for them Yes, it was to try to get the goal. Yes, it was trying to be first. But if I, in the process of pursuing the goal, end up out doing the best that I've ever done, I've accomplished something that I would have never accomplished had I not put my eyes on the goal. The folk wisdom says, if you reach for the moon, you'll end up amongst the stars. That the goal in front of us is that our faith is enriched, that although we struggle, we keep our eyes fixed on Christ, we keep our eyes fixed on the goal of that high calling, that our relationship with God is much more valuable than anything else that we could ever attain. Indeed, Christ offers us hope amid complexities of our world. It is our relationship with Christ that allows us to move past simple solutions of blaming others for our struggles in order to say, yes, I'm struggling. I'm not going to look for someone to blame. I'm just going to keep my eyes on the one who fixes all problems. That's the great thing about having someone in your life that all you know you need to do is to call them. Many of us have that fixer in our life that all you need to do is tell them, I've got a dishwasher, don't worry about it, I'll be there at three o'clock. I got, I got car troubles, don't worry about it, bring it by the shop. I, I got some lawn issues, don't worry about it, just leave your lawnmower out. There, there are folks that you can call on that fix things for us and we have faith in their ability to do what we cannot do. And so we don't struggle. We simply pick up the phone and call our fixer. Well, friends, the, the phone call for us is prayer. And through that wonderful discipline of prayer, we can call through the Holy Spirit, the one who fixes it all for us, who helps us to look at the world very differently and provides us with the lenses of hope and peace. Past problems, indeed, remind us of God's goodness, that if God did it for me in the past, I know God can do it for me in the future. And so it's just a matter of when, not if. Yes, sometimes we must struggle but Christ offers us the key to overcoming our struggles with grace and courage, knowing that God, our creator, is working on our behalf. And so the writer of scripture says that God works for the good in all things for those who love God and are called according to God's purpose. Now, I want you to hear this, friends. God works for the good in all our life situations for those who are called and in relationship with him. Did you hear it? I'm gonna say it again. God works for the good in all our life situations for those who have relationship with God. All our life situations, the good and the bad, the highs and the lows, the certainty and the questions, the simple and the complex. God is working in all of our situations to bring out something more precious than the finest metal, a faith that is unshakable. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
As we come to our time of offering, um, just a reminder for those in the sanctuary, there are offering boxes as you exit the sanctuary. For those viewing online and listening through Zoom, you have a couple options. Um, you may mail in or drop off a contribution to our address, which is 33112 Grand River, Farmington, Michigan, 48336. You may use PayPal and direct your contribution to the First United Methodist Church of Farmington, or you may text to give by texting lowercase f-u-m-c-g-i-v-e to 44321 and follow the prompts. Before we um, pray today, I wanted to offer my humble gratitude um, to those who serve this, camp, this country and have given the ultimate sacrifice for us all. You are gifts, and I pray for peace for you, your family, and your loved ones. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come today hopeful, cautious, but hopeful. We bring our fears and our faith before you this morning, as well as our gifts. Please use them as you see fit. In your precious name we pray, Lord. Amen. Friends, we've now come to that moment where we are able to join one another, arms linked as we go before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And as we do so, we have much to celebrate, much for us to be in prayer for. Uh, as Jill mentioned, we are in the midst of a Memorial Day weekend, and while many of us have gathered with family, probably for the first time in a long time, gathered around barbecue pits, whether they're charcoal or grilled, we're not judging anyone. <laughs> it's important to remember what this weekend really is about. It's not about a three-day weekend. It's about remembering the men and women, the sons and daughters, the husbands, the fathers, the uncles, the aunts, who did not make it home, who gave their life for someone standing next to them, who gave their life for us to have the opportunity to argue and bicker over things that, in the grand scheme of things, pale in comparison to what they've offered. 
And so we remember this Memorial Day weekend, especially on tomorrow, those who paid the ultimate price. So we lift them and we lift their families who continue to deal with their loss. We lift up our health care workers as they're continuing to battle not only positive COVID cases, but the administration of vaccines and the wonderfulness of people who come into the hospital in hurting presence, a uh, hurting need of healing, compassion, and mercy, and sometimes are not the nicest people. But they still do so with compassion and care, regardless of who they are. We lift up our teachers who have uh, here in Farmington. Uh, I did the calculation because my daughter wanted to make sure we did the calculation right. They've got nine more days. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Thank you. <laughs> They've done a yeoman's work this year, and we should appreciate them, not simply on Teacher Appreciation Day, but throughout the year, as many of us do. We continue to lift up those who are affected by the conflict in Gaza, along with those uh, who are celebrating great milestones. Uh, we celebrate Rachel, who's come through uh, undergrad and is on her way to, is it a combined master's PhD program? Mm -mm. You could just see the pride beaming. <laughs> uh, we certainly lift up Susanna Arun, who uh, graduated from Wayne State, and uh, Ginger Burris Thomas and Lance Thomas, who both graduated. We ask God's blessing of continued recovery over Ken Berry and Jim Lanstra, Pat Shuffler, Paul King, Patty Morrison, Marsha Butts, Andrea Schrader and Ruth Yu, all who are recovering in the various stages of the recovery process, some at the very end, some who are still moving through it. And for those who have different health challenges that are continuing to struggle, we lift up Karma Houston, Opal Sherman, John Welsh, Arthur Hood, Braden Smith and Nina Smith, Mildred Tyson, Edna Tyson, Harry Ellis, and Nadine Moses, an 84-year-old woman who got into her car at 2 a.m. and has not been found. We lift up those who continue to battle with the COVID-19 virus and its subsequent after effects. In particular, we lift up Debbie Betts and Jeremy Murray, Connie Haas's sister Lisa, the Cole family, Sandy, Jamie, and Aaron. For those who are battling with various forms of cancer, we lift Jerry Baum and Sam Johnston. Bill and Marge Johnson, it's good to see you too. We lift up Dottie Bradley and Doug Janor, Thomas Lee, Nellie, and Raina Edwards. And for all those families who grieve as the result of tragic means, especially the alarming and unsettling number of mass shootings that continue to unfold week in and week out. We lift up those of us who knew and loved the Reverend Dr. Wesley West Brunn, Gerald Smith and Barbara Janord, families of Teresa Landstra, Isla Eckerd and Helen Curry, family of Olive Lush and Jeremy Cook, family of Connie Haas's sister Pam, for Kirsten and Spencer Reuter, for Angela Turner and Kathy Asima, and all those who grieve as a result of tragic means. Offer you now, friends, a moment of silent prayer for the names that were lifted, the situations that were lifted, and those that are on your hearts and minds as well. A moment of silent prayer. God of us all, we've come this day not simply out of habit or routine for what the last 18 months have underscored for us is the importance of connection with one another and a connection with each other in this space. And so Lord, we've come to offer you the very best parts of ourselves, yielding our will to your way, that we might indeed become the best beacons of hope and transformation we can be for this world. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening, and we will be receptive to what you are directing and guiding us to do, that we will fight less and yield more, that we might be a blessing to others. Come now, Holy Spirit, as we lift up those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for this nation, 
We lift up their families and those who continue to grieve their loss. We lift up their comrades and arms who are affected in different ways by losing someone right next to them. Come Holy Spirit and continue to be with our healthcare workers as they move us through this pandemic season and continue to care for us in our illnesses. Be with our educators for the job that they've done helping to keep our children focused, to continue to offer them encouragement and insight as they ingrain within them the skills they'll need to continue forth. Lord, we ask your blessing upon all those who are in need of your healing touch, those who are in various stages of the recovery process, those who are still struggling with illnesses. Be with the doctors and the nurses and those who are in care for them. Be with their families that they might be at peace. Speak to our hearts this day as we lift up all those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Especially, Lord, be with us and those who find the only way for complex angst and anxiety is violence. Help us to be more peaceable. Lord, we lift all these things before you in your matchless and mighty name, knowing that in you all things are possible, that you are working even right now, and that you know what we needed even before we lifted voice and bowed our head. So come, Holy Spirit, embrace us as always, and encourage us to see the world through the lenses of Christ with love and joy and peace. As now we join our voices in the model prayer that Jesus offers to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this day, friends, is Lift High the Cross. Lift High the Cross. Our closing hymn this day, Lift High the Cross.
offer your parting blessing this day, just a reminder to you to remain seated until the ushers have uh, dismissed you. Uh, we're still in our health and safety protocols just to make sure uh, that we're entering and exiting the sanctuary in as safest way as possible. And now, friends, on this beautiful day, go forth and not only allow the sun-soakedness of this wonderful, warm day to hit you and to inspire you, but also allow the Son of Christ to shine brightly within offering hope and peace to those who cross your path. And remember, you are a blessing from God. Now go be a blessing to someone else. Have a great day. Have a wonderful week. Have a great Memorial Day. And take a moment just to pause in silence for those who we remember. Amen.